In this final question, they will tell you that your function f of g of x equals k. Now, they define some weird k thing. And they tell you it has two solutions, you know, in this range we were looking at before, in this domain, I mean. So find k. So what I mean by that is if we look back at this function right here, this weird graph, maybe what I'll do is I'll uh, actually copy most of this graph if I can. Can I? I hope so. Copy Go over here and try to paste. Let's see if that works. Hooray! So what I'm trying to do here is just try to draw you, okay, here was our graph. Now we tell you that if this thing equals k, what does that mean? Remember that this represents your y value. So that's like it equals some constant y value. So for example, if I had some sort of function, just like some sort of graph that goes, you know, like any shape you want like this. If I said, so if that was my f of x, if I said that equals 2, what I could do then is I could find my function here, set, and I also graph some function called 2. So maybe it's like, maybe this is 2. And you can see that here, see there's 1, 2, 3, here there's 4 solutions. See that that's, that's because this is, this is like a y value here, but so is this. So you're saying y equals this, which is this graph, is the same as y equals some number. Remember, that's a y value. A constant number would be just like some number that's just hanging around here. Watch carefully what happens. If I just randomly drew my y equals k, what if I made k uh, equal to 7? If I just guessed, I just want to show you what would happen. If I put k equals 7, that means I would set my original equation, this f of g of x, that's this graph, I set that equal to k equals 7, that means I would be graphing this. And where would this thing meet this thing? Well, it would only meet once. There's only one solution. That's not this. You see, so that wouldn't work. So I would ignore this. All right? Because there's only, only one solution. So that can't be it. Where can it have two solutions? Can you see where it happens? It happens exactly when this line right here, where it crosses, can you see this, uh, this value right here? If I drew it like this, right here. You can see here it crosses here and here. There's two solutions. And it can be anywhere down below here. It could also be here. Do you notice? Like here, it could be here, it could be here, it could be here. It could be anywhere until down to whatever that value down here was. I don't know what that value was. So we, have to, we have to determine this. Can you see that? So anywhere from here to here. So I need to figure out what values of k are possible. So can you see that up here, I can determine then that the top one, this is why it's a little bit of a sneaky part here, but the very top one hopefully is easy. You can say that at x equals 0, y equals 3. Do you see that? That's this value right here. That's the top. So that works. See there, there's two solutions. And anywhere down below, can you see that anywhere smaller than 3? So I'm going to put, for example, I know for sure now my answer is going to be k is me somewhere between some number and 3. And it can equal three. We'll talk about that in a second here. And it'll be hopefully somewhere, something, you know, it can equal something else here. So let's see then what value of x gives me that smallest value, value of y. Well, maybe I need to determine that. So let's maybe ask our calculator for that. You know how to ask your calculator for that? That's the minimum value. So we go to menu and I can do analyze and I can ask it for the minimum. And it wants to know the lower bound, so I put it maybe to the, here's the minimum right here. So if I want the left, I go a little bit left, upper bound is somewhere there. It tells me the uh, max, uh, the, sorry, the minimum happens at x equals 1.41 and y equals minus one. So I'll put that in. So x equals 1.41 and y equals one. That's another place, so that's over here. Uh, whoops, it wasn't one. Sorry, it was minus one, wasn't it? Let's go back to the calculator. Yeah, it's minus one. So I should put that in here, that's a minus one. So we know that this one right here, now can it equal this? It can equal this. So it can equal three, that's why I consider this one. However, look very, very carefully at this. It turns out it cannot equal exactly negative one. That's a sneaky one. Because see, it can't exactly be negative one. If it's exactly at negative one, there's only one solution. See, it only touches it once. So that's why you can't do this. So it cannot, cannot equal 
minus one. It has to be just a little bit above it, just a tiny little bit. So this is just a sneaky type of question here, but they're just wanting this range, sorry, this domain technically. Well, actually, no, it's not a domain. You could say this is a range here. This is a range of values here. But it basically, k can be between negative one. Uh, so that was this value right here. So I just drew it wrong, but that was actually negative one here. That was there. So it can be between here and here. Right? So anywhere between here and here, as you scan up and down here, here, notice this red line right here would have two solutions, right? Remember, if I took this red line and I, oops, maybe I'll just draw myself another line. I'll draw myself a big, a big ugly blue line, maybe. I'll make it a big ugly one that I can actually draw like this. So watch this, as I scan from top to bottom, you notice right here, as I scan top to bottom here, notice here I'm only crossing it once. Remember, that's not two solutions. That's why I can't count this, right? And setting it equal to k, that's because that's a constant number. But watch, as I go down, as I go down right here, there's two places. Notice it hits here and here. Now there's two solutions. That's why I counted here. As I go down and down, notice here there's two solutions, here and here. As I scan it down a little bit further, do you notice here there's two solutions, there and there, they cross. And as I go down, it keeps going until I go down to negative one, where there's... Well, I just didn't draw it very well. That's just my crappy drawing. But the graph right here, technically it stops having two solutions. That's why you can't consider it. I hope that made sense by scanning up and down like this. So that was actually a pretty tough question uh, if you think about this last section here. But it's just a matter of uh, interpreting it in the right way.